Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good evening, everyone. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. <clears throat> A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer, you are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. O oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you while you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from of old. No ear has ever heard no eye ever seen any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might us meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you the potter. We are the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. What? 
once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted. The Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong, Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. May your help be with the man of your right hand, with the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life, and we will call upon your name. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge, as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping, what I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. Once again, good evening and welcome. We thank you for your presence and for your support of the Shrine Church. and. We thank and pray for all those uh, joining with us via the internet. The people of Israel have known great suffering throughout their history. It was true in the prophet Isaiah's time, and it was even more true in the 20th century when Hitler and his Nazi stormtroopers put millions of Jews to death. And it is still true today. Jews are still under attack, even in the land of the free and the home of the brave, even 
in Slavic village. You may have heard of the desecration of the Jewish cemetery between uh, Harvard and Lansing just a few weeks ago. Very sad. I should suppose there's no respect for the living. Why can I expect respect for the dead? I remember meeting the great writer and Jewish witness, Eli Wiesel. He himself was a Holocaust survivor. And he told this story about a Jewish rabbi during that terrible time. The rabbi would faithfully come to the synagogue each day and pray, I have come to inform you, master of the universe, that we are here. As the toll of slain, deported, missing Jews increased, he still came faithfully and prayed, You see, Lord, we are still here. Finally, he is the only Jew left alive with a heart that is full and numb with grief. He comes to the synagogue once more and prays, you see, I am still here. And sadly he asks, but you, where are you? Which of us in our own time, where were you, God, when my son was in that terrible accident? Where were you, God, when my wife suffered so terribly before succumbing to breast cancer? Where were you, God, when my mother died? Or as we view the world's enormous problems such as out-of-control viruses, who has not asked, why doesn't God just come down and straighten the whole mess out? Then there would be no more starvation, or war, or oppression, or sickness and death. Why don't you come down? The golden prophet Isaiah, and I always call him the golden prophet because he is the most sensitive of all the prophets of Israel. This prophet was struck to the very core of his being with the suffering of his people. Yes, even though he, like the Jewish people, believed themselves to be a chosen people, with a very special relationship with God. As I just shared with you, there have been times when God seemed very far away from them. Just as troubling, however, was the sinfulness of his people, as we heard in our first Bible lesson today. Somehow we, like ancient Israel, have deluded ourselves into thinking that sin is no big deal. With Rob here, he reminds me of sports, because you know he writes a sports column. And isn't there a rule with professional basketball? No harm, no foul. No harm, no foul. If I don't get caught, it's all right. If no one gets hurt, what's the sweat? It's only myself that I'm hurting, so it's my business, isn't it? 
What delusions. Thinking that sin is no big deal. We ignore its power to destroy health and home, to damage our witness and impede spiritual growth. We disregard its power to block our view of God and leave us slaves to our own passions. It was as a warning to us that the Lord Jesus taught, blessed are the poor in heart, where they shall see God. The Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. In other words, there is something about sin that coats the soul with grime and prevents us from seeing God. Where are those who listen, however? Until it is too late. There is one more thing to say today. That is, God has come down. That, of course, is what Advent is all about. From beyond time and space, down past the galaxies and all the heavenly firmament, in an event that surpasses our grandest attempts to get our little brains around it, God has come down. In a little obscure town outside of Jerusalem, in a lowly stable, he came as a tiny baby born to a humble couple from a backward village called Nazareth. God has come down. That which the golden prophet Isaiah prayed for has happened. God has come down in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. God has come down in the most holy Eucharist, his sacred body and precious blood. And he is the answer to humanity's suffering and sin. The Lord Jesus is the answer. He has come down, but the world has yet to receive him. For you see, what he offers us is himself alone. We want hope. He is hope. We want peace. He is peace. We want love. He is love. The problem is, we want hope, but we don't want him. We want peace. But we don't want him. We want love. But we don't want him. We want to achieve a world without suffering or sin. But we do not want to open our lives so that he might begin his healing and reconciling work through us. There is no other way, however. Without Jesus, there is no hope, no peace, no love available to this world. Will you receive him? Do you want him? Do you really want him? Amen. I believe
Let's bring our needs and prayers before the Lord. For the church, may the Lord look graciously upon us as we proclaim the gospel message. Let us pray to the Lord. For civic leaders, may Christ strengthen their conviction as servant leaders for all people. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who face hunger and malnutrition, may God grant them strength and provide the means for them to obtain their daily bread. Let us pray to the Lord. For our family members and loved ones who struggle with mental illness, may God bring them healing and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, especially Cindy Michelich, Michelich and all our loved ones, may God bring them home to be with him forever. Let us pray to the Lord. What follows is a prayer of blessing for our Advent wreath. Lord, our God, we praise you for your Son, Jesus Christ. He is Emmanuel, the hope of the peoples. He is the wisdom that teaches and guides us. He is the Savior of every nation. Lord God, let your blessing come upon us as we bless this wreath. May the wreath and its light be a sign of Christ's promise to bring us salvation. May he come quickly and do not delay. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Except we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominations, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Oh, holy
are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the rainfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in these most, most perilous times, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, safe from the increasing pandemic, safe from increasing violence, safe from the vagaries of the weather, and for the safety of all those serving in the military, law enforcement, doctors, nurses, and essential workers. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take sins of the world, grant us, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Let's move us forward, you. 
Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray, for even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you and yours, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth in peace and go Browns if they play. A lot of games are being canceled due to the pandemic. But you, in the meantime, don't shop until you drop. If you can, stay home, stay safe. We're praying for you.